A helical antenna is an antenna consisting of a conducting wire wound in the form of a helix. In most cases, helical antennas are mounted over a ground plane. The feed line is connected between the bottom of the helix and the ground plane. Helical antennas can operate in one of two principal modes a euro normal mode or axial mode. In the normal mode or broadside helix, the dimensions of the helix are small compared with the wavelength. The antenna acts similarly to an electrically short dipole or monopole, and the radiation pattern, similar to these antennas is omnidirectional, with maximum radiation at right angles to the helix axis. The radiation is linearly polarized parallel to the helix axis. These are used for compact antennas for portable and mobile two-way radios, and for UHF television broadcasting antennas. In the axial mode or N-fire helix, the dimensions of the helix are comparable to a wavelength. The antenna functions as a directional antenna radiating a beam off the ends of the helix, along the antenna's axis. It radiates circularly polarized radio waves. These are used for satellite communication. Normal mode helical. If the diameter and pitch of the helix are significantly less than a wavelength, the antenna is called a normal mode helix. The antenna acts similar to a monopole antenna, with an omnidirectional radiation pattern, radiating equal power in all directions perpendicular to the antenna. However, because of the inductance added by the helical shape, the antenna acts like an inductively loaded monopole. At its resonant frequency it is shorter than a quarter wavelength long. Therefore normal mode helices can be used as electrically short monopoles, an alternative to center or base loaded whip antennas, in applications where a full-sized quarter wave monopole would be too big. As with other electrically short antennas, the gain, and thus the communication range, of the helix will be less than that of a full-sized antenna. Their compact size makes helicals useful as antennas for mobile and portable communications equipment on the HF, VHF, and UHF bands. An effect of using a helical conductor rather than a straight one is that the matching impedance is changed from the nominal 50 ohms to between 25 to 35 ohms base impedance. This does not seem to be adverse to operation or matching with a normal 50 ohm transmission line, provided the connecting feed is the electrical equivalent of a one-half wavelength at the frequency of operation. Another example of the type as used in mobile communications is spaced constant turn in which two or more different linear windings are wound on a single former and spaced so as to provide an efficient balance between capacitance and inductance for the radiating element at a particular resonant frequency. Many examples of this type have been used extensively for 27 MHz CB radio with a wide variety of designs originating in the US and Australia in the late 1960s. Multi-frequency versions with plug-in taps have become the mainstay for multi-band single sideband modulation HF communications. Most examples were wound with copper wire using a fiberglass rod as a former. This flexible radiator is then covered with heat shrink tubing which provides a resilient and rugged waterproof covering for the finished mobile antenna. These popular designs are still in common use as of 2010 and have been universally adapted as standard FM receiving antennas for many factory produced motor vehicles as well as the existing basic style of aftermarket HF and VHF mobile helical. The most common use for broadside helixes is in the rubber ducky antenna found on most portable VHF and UHF radios. Equals helical broadcasting antennas equals Specialized normal mode helical antennas are used for FM radio and television broadcasting on the VHF and UHF bands. Axial mode helical. When the helix diameter and pitch are at or above the wavelength of operation, the antenna operates in the axial mode. This is a non-resonant traveling wave mode, in which instead of standing waves, the waves of current and voltage travel in one direction, up the helix. Instead of radiating linearly polarized waves normal to the antenna's axis, it radiates a beam of radio waves with circular polarization along the axis, off the ends of the antenna. The main lobes of the radiation pattern are along the axis of the helix, off both ends. Since in a directional antenna only radiation in one direction is wanted, the other end of the helix is terminated in a flat metal sheet or screen reflector to reflect the waves forward. 
In radio transmission, circular polarization is often used where the relative orientation of the transmitting and receiving antennas cannot be easily controlled, such as in animal tracking and spacecraft communications, or where the polarization of the signal may change, so end fire helical antennas are frequently used for these applications. Since large helices are difficult to build and unwieldy to steer and aim, the design is commonly employed only at higher frequencies, ranging from VHF up to microwave. The helix in the antenna can twist in two possible directions, right-handed or left-handed, as defined by the right-hand rule. In an axial mode helical antenna the direction of twist of the helix determines the polarization of the radio waves. A left-handed helix radiates left circularly polarized radio waves. A right-handed helix radiates right circularly polarized radio waves. Helical antennas can receive signals with any type of linear polarization, such as horizontal or vertical polarization, but when receiving circularly polarized signals the handedness of the receiving antenna must be the same as the transmitting antenna. Left-hand polarized antennas suffer a severe loss of gain when receiving right circularly polarized signals, and vice versa. The dimensions of the helix are determined by the wavelength I of the radio waves used, which depends on the frequency. In axial mode operation, the spacing between the coils should be approximately one quarter of the wavelength, and the diameter of the coils should be approximately the wavelength divided by pi. The length of the coil determines how directional the antenna will be as well as its gain. Longer antennas will be more sensitive in the direction in which they point. Terminal impedance in axial mode ranges between 100 and 200 ohms. The resistive part is approximated by. Where R is resistance in ohms, C is the circumference of the helix, and I is the wavelength. Impedance matching to standard 50 or 75 ohm coaxial cable is often done by a quarter wave strip in section acting as an impedance transformer between the helix and the cable termination. The maximum directive gain is approximately where n is the number of turns and s is the spacing between turns. The half power beam width is the beam width between nulls is see also, Telstar. References John D. Krauss and Ronald J. Machtke, Antennas, for All Applications, 3rd Edition, 2002, McGraw-Hill Higher Education, Constantine Bellanis, Antenna Theory, Analysis and Design, 1982, John Wiley and Sons, Warren Stusman and Gary Thiel, Antenna Theory and Design, 2nd. Ed. 1998, John Wiley and Sons. External links. Helical antennas antenna theory